Hello, this is Tyler with Tandem Cross. Today, we'll be discussing in-depth installation and offer a tuning guide for the M-Lock compatible forend for the Manicore X. This video, as well as the rest of the videos on the topic, will be playlisted with each other and will likely answer any questions you may have, so be sure to check the rest of the videos in the series. Just as a friendly reminder, these instructions are available in written form on our website as well. Always be sure to check there for latest information regarding tips and tricks, as well as any information about revisions to either the product or to the base firearm itself. Please make sure that the firearm is clear of any ammunition, as is your workspace, and make sure that you are wearing the appropriate safety gear. We'll be showing the installation of a couple of fasteners in this video, and for any of these fasteners, we recommend using medium strength blue Loctite. Included in the package with your forend, will be a couple of items. You'll have one small grub screw, one button head screw, a smaller Allen key, a larger Allen key, and then in the forend itself, as you can see, there'll be two set screws pre-installed. Now, if you're going to be using multiple uppers on your one Manicorax lower, just as we recommended purchasing additional shock block bolt buffers in the previous installation, we would definitely recommend picking up multiple of these four ends. Uh, the installation does take a couple of minutes and needs to be tuned to fit each firearm specifically. Looking at the bottom of this four end here, you'll see two holes. The front hole being threaded and then the rear hole being unthreaded. Into this front hole that is threaded, we will take our small set screw and then pre-install it. In the case of a Ruger receiver, such as this, the tongue of the receiver that the forehand mounts to has a slight angle to it. So in order to make sure the handguard is straight when it's installed, we will be adjusting that little set screw to compensate. So it is flush with the backside right now, and I'll go ahead and give it maybe one and a half to two turns to start and see where we are. You'll see a little bit of that set screw has protruded out the inside. In the case of aftermarket receivers, where this face is perfectly parallel, then in most cases you can omit that set screw entirely. It depends from one receiver manufacturer to the next. There's gonna be some variation there. Before installation, let's take a look at our V-block here. In some assemblies, the bottom of the V-block will stick down below the tongue on the front of the receiver. On our handguard, we relieve uh, an area where that V-block is, so most of the time that is not a problem at all. However, with certain combinations of aftermarket V-blocks or aftermarket barrels, that bottom face will stick down enough to cause an issue with the handguard not lining up quite where you want it to. And if that is the case, it would be a simple matter of removing a little bit of material from the bottom of the V-block so that the bottom face of the V-block and the bottom of that front receiver portion are more or less on the same plane as each other. With that taken care of, we're gonna place our handguard onto the receiver and then take the button head screw, place that in the hole, line it up with the takedown screw hole, and then with the larger of the two included Allen keys, we'll snug this down. Once that's snug, we can see how good our eyeball adjustment of the first set screw was. In this case, it was really quite close. So what I'll go ahead and do is just tweak it a little bit more. Need the long leg. And we'll just tighten that in. And you can see a little bit the handguard sort of tilting away so that the handguard is approximately parallel with the bore axis. And that's looking really good. Now that we have adjusted this front set screw properly, we'll want to dial in these rear set screws. To do that properly, we'll take our main button head mounting screw and just back it off a quarter turn or so, just a little bit so that we have some float. 
that's good. And then we can take the shorter Allen key once again, the same one that we used to adjust this front screw. And then we will reach in to these pockets at the front and use that to tighten the set screws up against the face of the receiver to adjust the handguard left and right so that two things have happened. One, those screws are bearing up against the front of the receiver, nice and snug, making sure the handguard or the forend is rigid and that the handguard is aligned to the barrel. In this case, I'm tilting off to the right a little bit. So I'll adjust that by tightening that screw just a bit more. Give that another quarter turn. And now that fore end is aligned to the barrel. And we can go ahead and snug the main attachment screw back down. And the fore end is now mounted, tuned for the gun, quite rigid. Now, at this point, you're free to mount any M-Lock compatible accessories of your choice. Front angled or vertical grip, sling mounts, bipods, weapon lights, arc or rail segments. Whatever suits your plan for this build would be right at home on this forend. Having said that, thank you for watching everybody. Be sure to check the next entry in the playlist. Like and subscribe for more. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video on whatever social media platform you use. I'm Luke with Tandem Cross, and we're here to make your good guns great. Keep up with us on social media for daily updates. I'll see you next time.